Hey, here we are again, Sunday morning, and another video has come out. Now, you're seeing a lot of product on a table, and you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, what's he going to talk about now? You know, we all know we got to put up food and everything else. And yes, that is true. We all need to make sure that we're putting up food and uh, supplies and all that kind of stuff. But what today's video about isn't really about everybody putting up food. Today's video is putting up food about what you want to eat and what you can eat. Now, a lot of people like a lot of different things. So my list isn't going to be, say, good for you or your family. And your list won't be as good for maybe your brother or your sister or somebody else or me. Now, there's a lot to take in consideration when you are doing your prepping. If it's something you're, you're not going to eat, don't buy it. You know, I have said in one of my videos, you know, you should only buy 90% of the food you will eat and 10% of maybe the food that you wouldn't eat unless it was an emergency. Say, for instance, spam. Now, there's a lot of people that don't like spam, but in an emergency situation, you know, it's something that's going to fill you up and give you the fats and the calories and everything else that you need. You have to look at it that way. You also have to make sure that you're paying attention to the ingredients. There are a lot of people out there today that are allergic to a lot of things. And if that's the case, your list is going to be quite different from my list. You know, you may not be able to eat a lot of, say, quote, salty foods. You may not be able to eat regular flour. You may have to do maybe some almond flour or different types of flour. Now, exactly how long almond flour, before anybody asks, um, will last if you put it in a Marlar bag with an auction absorber and stuff, that I do not know. And I'm going to try to look that up and put that, I'll pin that in the comments below. The thing of it is, is you have to make sure that you're paying attention, especially if someone in your family is allergic to certain food items, that you are paying attention to prepping around those family members, okay? And we all know, you know, a lot of people are allergic to anything with peanuts. A lot of, a lot of people can't eat um, gluten, so you have to try to figure out, you know, how to get around that. Um, a lot of people are allergic to certain oils. A lot of people are allergic to certain types of meat or the way that it's canned, um, different types of vegetables. Uh, there's so many things. There are so many things that go into that. So you have to pay close attention to what the need of your family is. When I do my videos and stuff, this is a basically, okay, what I'll eat, you know, in an emergency type situation, okay? My taste is different than your taste, and your taste is different than my taste. Now, I'm not really allergic to anything as far as any type of a food product. I do know lots of people that are. I know a lot of my family members are. Um, there are certain things that they can't have. They've got to stay away from, even if it's dairy products, whatever it may be. You know, but there are ways that you still can prep and be ready for your family in a moment's notice, but you have to work your way and prep around those situations. Now, it comes right down to even like your freeze-dried foods, like your Mountain House and any of those and everything else. You can read the back of the ingredients and see if there's anything in there that's going to affect any of the family members. You know, everything has you know, the ingredients on it. So you probably already have a pretty good idea about what um, your family members can eat and what they can't eat. So at that point, you wanna start making a list and having a plan. I'm big on making a plan and having a list. Um, if anybody hasn't noticed, if you've watched a lot of my videos, I talk about having a plan, any list all the time. I think it is very, very, very important. Uh, it just takes a lot of the the guessing game out of a situation where in if you were forced into an emergency type situation 
the thought process because you're already freaking out because of whatever is going on um, has been taken out of it if you have a plan that is written down and you can look at that and execute it. You know, you stop, you start with your top priority right down through the list. I'm big on that and you, that's why you're going to hear me talk about that a lot because I think that having a plan in place and having it written down in either a notebook, a journal, however you want to store it, you know. I'm not big on putting it onto your cell phone just because what happens if some reason either your phone goes dead, it got wet, it's fried, something like that, now you don't have it. If you have it written down into some of the pads that I have shown you, like the waterproof pads, you know, they're called right in the rain. Those, unless they burn, if they get wet, you can still read. So back to the video, okay? Another thing you have to make sure that you have when you're doing all your preps and everything, no matter what your food restrictions may be, you have to have some type of comfort food for you and your family for an emergency situation, especially if you have kids, all right? You know, the kids could already be upset, especially if you had to leave and everything else. But if you have some comfort food that you know that they like or it's their favorite, you know, that will help keep them calm under the circumstances that you are in. And that is very important because the last thing you want is the whole family to be all in uproar and everything else. So if you have the kids where they're calm and they can, you know, make sure that they, they're not really thinking about the situation right at the moment, and you as parents or a parent, it gives you time to digest the situation and make smart decisions. Now, we also remember, a good thing about prepping is, you know, you gotta have food. Because when the body starts running low on food and hunger starts setting in, you're more prone to make very bad decisions, very hasty decisions on the fly that could end up costing you or your loved ones your life or their life. Bad things happen when people get to a certain stage of hunger. You know, they'll revolt to whatever. So you want to make sure that you have a plan in place, that you have the food that you need, you have the food that your family can eat safely, barring any you know allergic reactions, because that's the last thing you want is to feed somebody something and then all of a sudden they have an allergic reaction and it's something that needs to be treated, say, by a doctor or something, but not knowing the situation, you may not be able to get to that point. And if you don't have some way and some type of a first aid kit to treat that, depending on what it may be, then you're pretty much SOL because you're not gonna be able to get to the doctor. So you have to make sure that when you're doing your planning, my list isn't gonna be good for everybody out there. You know, I try to show you the basics. This is just all basic stuff. Now it's up to you what you want to do with it. You know, you may not like canned asparagus. You know, you may not like canned potatoes or canned green beans or, you know, whatever the case may be. But it shows you a basic starting guide for you and your family to make sure that you have food to eat in an emergency situation. The biggest thing that I want you to take away from this is, is you really have to pay attention and you don't have to go 100% by my list that I show you that I do or anybody else out here on YouTube shows you what you need to do. We're all just trying to give you a basic guide to go by. Now you fill in the holes where you don't like this, you take that out. I like this, you put that in. You know, your different types of meat products, your canned chicken, tuna, you know, you, you gotta have some protein and stuff in there. You can't just eat veggies, you know, or, you know, make bread or something like that, or rice. You know, rice, beans, 
you know, that goes only so far. You know, you still need the protein as far as some type of a meat product. So you need to figure out what maybe that could be. You know, like I said, it could be your tuna fish, uh, canned hams, uh, canned corned beef, spam, canned chicken. There's so much that's out there. You know, you can get the barbecue beef, you can get all that kind of stuff. It's what you're going to eat. What I give you is just a template to go by. But it doesn't mean that you have to do everything exactly how I say to do it. This is your template. You take away what you won't eat or don't like and you add in your template what you will eat. And make sure that you have a plan and you write it down and you keep track. Because this way here, it's so easy to know if you're not using a working pantry and you just have a tote or totes or five gallon buckets that are, you know, you have stored food and stuff in and you don't have to keep opening them up and everything else. And you can just, you know, you kind of have a, something to go by. My things are all starting to fall over here, <laughs> but that's today's video. And I just want everybody to know that what I do, I do for you. And I try to make sure that I answer all your questions. And this is a template to go by. This is a basic guide to go by from having your vacuum pack stuff to your Marlar bags. I've done all kinds of videos, your freeze dried foods, your canned goods, your dry goods, your macaroni, the whole nine yards, right down to your powdered milk, your freeze dried coffee. You even got to get coffee mate. You get the powder form. You know, a lot of people won't drink black coffee. I mean, I will if I have to, but if I can have a powder form to put into it, well, I'm going to put that in there. But it's also on what is everybody in your family can safely eat. So this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And I just want everybody out there to keep prepping, stay safe, and pay attention to the ingredients, especially if you have friends or family at your house that do have allergic reactions to certain foods or certain ingredients in those foods to keep everybody safe. So until next time, Survival Preparedness for Beginners, I'll catch you all on the flip side.